Hey everybody, it's Mark with Mark's Home Hobbies. How are you guys doing today? It's a nice holiday uh, Monday here. Uh, yeah, something interesting happened today. <laughs> Placed the Amazon order last night and it showed up, part of it showed up today on a holiday. In the morning. I ordered it last night. Man, that is fast. I have to say Amazon is good. <laughs> Dang. Anyways, let's open up this here box and uh, see what... I'm shooting a little video here, uh, just talking about a few things that I've learned so far in my couple of days of having a laser uh, engraving system. Um, yeah, the, anyways, there's the completed dust shoe for the uh, dust collection. I'm going dust-free in my workshop now. I'm tired of cleaning up. So, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, I was trying something on this laser. I've got this fourth... Uh, axis or this y-axis roller here for doing cylindrical objects and um, you can see what I'm attempting to do here is in I'm attempting to engrave on a Bud Light can. Let's talk about this roller for a minute here while I'm on the subject. This motor here is from a 3D printer that I had because the motor they supplied with it the little connector on here, although they gave me about four different kinds of connectors and a bunch of wires and a four pin connector thingy to hook it up, I could not get any of those to fit into that hole on their little motor there, so I don't know what kind they're using, but it's definitely not any kind that I had, so uh, to hook up to my machine here, you know, to this Ben Box deal. So, uh, I guess this is like some kind of a gerbil board. There's an Arduino Nano on there and a couple of drivers. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. So I had to take a motor off uh, that I had laying around from a 3D printer and uh, mount that on there. And then when I plugged it in, it just did nothing but vibrate. So I had to literally take apart this connector here and switch around two wires, the middle two. Uh, so if you ever have that problem, you're putting it together in a machine and you, know, you put it together and you go to try to move and the motor just vibrates, just take those two center wires and switch them around. And uh, you should be good to go at that point. Uh, yeah, so that's what I did. Um, you can see I need better, <laughs> better length of cable here, I guess. I'm all out of cable. And I'm right almost to the back, so I guess I'm close to the right length. I if I move this box back about six or eight inches, I'd probably be good, so I may do that. Um, I'm going to build a whole new enclosure for this whole thing instead of having it sitting on the Harbor Freight stand with these two flimsy three-quarter inch boards on there. I'm going to build a more substantial base for it. Uh, I'm also going to relocate the dust collector better so that it... Uh, I have better access to the hosing and stuff like that. Uh, I'll mount these onto a curtain rod or something here so I can slide it back and forth, cover it up when I don't want to see it. Uh, yeah, and so anyhow, not to get off the subject, but I, I hooked that up and it took me a few tries to figure out how to orient the piece in there so that I had the bottom left hand corner as a starting point so I could reliably fit something on there and frame it you know and do all the things you got to do with a laser so um yeah, eventually i did get it hooked in you can see i took the other wire off the other motor here so now since i used the wire from this motor and i changed it in order to use this plug because these two motors have the same plug except the two wires are reversed on this motor so now when I get ready to use it again here, I have to take this back apart and switch those two wires and go to here. So I'm going to look for another cord like this in my cord pile and see if I can come up with another one. So I don't have to do that all the time. I can have a dedicated cord for this. I don't know if I have any other ones that have this nice uh, shielding on there, this cloth shielding. But So I may just switch this one back and then find another one and switch that one over and use this. Because I don't know how many, you know, how much times I'm going to use this, the frequency is what I'm trying to say, of when I'm going to use this, so I'm going to use it more as a straight, you know, XY engraver more than I will the rotary, so uh, the rotary is just for special jobs, and the rotary, one thing nice about it, and you can use that with uh, this gerbil unit right down here too, and you can use that, that gerbil unit with the uh, 
with this offline controller you can control this engraver with that setup too which is what I will be going for I eventually want to eliminate this bend box right here um, it, although it does work good so I may mount it onto another machine or I'll sell it off or something I don't know I'll do something with it uh, but yeah I eventually like to use this box here in the offline system for all my stuff because there's only one gerbil setting that you really have to change in order to go from laser to router so you just have to make sure that's enabled and then that uh, takes the Z axis out of the picture and enables the uh, the cutting commands to work on depth so uh, as far as I understand it anyways uh, yeah I really think that the dust shoot turned out pretty good Another little thing I'd like to touch on in this video, uh, I don't want to make it too long, but I could go on and on and on, but uh, Harbor Freight tools, okay, in, ter in terms of tooling, the bits, all right, when you go to Harbor Freight and you want to get a router bit, such as the one that's in there right now, you can look at that bit, look at the tip of it, even in this bad lighting I can see that it's burnt. <laughs> now, the only piece that I cut with that bit was this piece right here <laughs> and that's small that's five by three by inch and a half tall yeah you know there was like three cuts on there and by the time I got down to the bottom you can see where it was starting to burn on the side and that was making a mess okay and it's the first time I ever used that tool so in other words, if you're not buying uh, good tooling, if you're just going to Harbor Freight and purchasing, you know, bits from Harbor Freight and thinking that they're going to do what you want it to do, um, I, just spend the extra money and get something good. Get something that's titanium coated Amana. That's a pretty good one to look for. So um, you're going to spend a little extra money on those bits, but... Uh, they are well worth it because those Harbor Freight bits, even though you might get five of them for 10 bucks or 20 bucks, that's all they're worth. They're not even worth one shot. I mean, you can only get one part out of one tool. That's pretty sad. So, somebody at Harbor Freight slipping on their quality control there. I mean, the rest of the tool, except the tip, is doggone sharp. But you can't cut with a tool with a dull tip because... Uh, you're going to have a fire down below. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Um, yeah, the gerbil unit here, I was going to talk about something else too. Um, these are NEMA 23 motors. Uh, somebody mentioned to me before that maybe I was uh, overdriving this little unit by using the NEMA 23 motors. But that's what this unit came with. And uh, these are rated at like 1.7 to 2 amps. And as far as I know... These, this particular gerbil unit can handle two amps so it might be right on the edge but I always turn my tools you know I set my tool speeds down and I set my cut depths down on the tool you know uh, within the tool programming within Vectric and uh, Aspire so that that way it doesn't cut as hard and then I run the feed down I run the feed at maybe 30 or 40 percent and I, I usually have my machines running pretty fast so that way if I have light cuts or I have to do something faster I have like a lot of light cuts then I can run the machine faster at that point without dragging the motors or you know causing a lot of heat because I do uh, use the old hand on the motor trick when I'm running sometimes just to make sure when I'm running a hard job that it's not overheating the unit so uh I don't know, I'm not a professional at this, so I, I don't know exactly what I'm <laughs> really doing, but I think I'm doing the right thing. And uh, I know it looks pretty cool when it's running and everything is, is going and uh, uh, you're cutting wood and you're making chips and stuff, but uh, I'm going to have that vacuum on there to to collect the chips a little bit because it just makes too much of a dog on mess. You know, if you have a computer over here, by the time you finish cutting a job, you know, it's it's covered with fine dust and sawdust because, you know, you're not using dust collection. You can even see the dust collects on the dust collector pipe even when you're using it. So, yeah, all this stuff here, it makes a lot of dust, a lot of fumes, um, you know, like air extraction in here is a definite must. And uh, I have pretty good airflow through here as it is. The place is not sealed up all that well. 
Uh, so until I get something good, I have to limit the amount of uh, fumes and everything that comes off this machine and the amount of dust. So um, you can see I've been working. I got some dust down in the bag there. Uh, it does work good. I've tried it out. Um, it's very easy to take off. And it's kind of flexible too. The only problem with it is I have to kind of stick my wrench up like inside of there a little bit to get to the nut when I want to change tools. But not a big issue really. I mean, you know, I'm not running anything at production levels and I don't need super speed and <laughs> I don't care if it takes me an extra few seconds in order to do it. Uh, it's, it's just part of the game. So what I do want to eventually do is engrave on some glass because somebody told me that uh, these machines engrave on glass. Now I'm doing a little test here and uh, I don't know, maybe I'll split this video off into a couple different parts. I don't know yet. Uh, we'll see how long it ends up being. What I'm doing now is uh, I'm engraving just some words on there to see how well they come out on the white surface there where it's Bud Light across there. We're going to alter that surface a little bit and um, see how that looks. Because what we're really trying to get to is a point where we could engrave on it, you know, like engraving on a white surface is really difficult because of the reflection. And uh, the laser tends to reflect more than it does cut. So uh, if you're using lasers, you know, you'll find this out quick when you go to do some work. Um, you're going to want to have it focused at the right length. Well, this machine here being, you know, from the country that it's from, doesn't really come with any instructions that are usable. So you have to kind of figure it out yourself. So and what I've come across and determined is uh, the the focal length for this laser right here is going to be around 20 millimeters from the surface when you want to do engraving. Now if you want to do cutting, it's going to be probably more, maybe around 40 or 50 or something like that. So you want to make sure that that beam is at its smallest point at that range. So in other words, uh, get yourself set up to where you measure about 20 millimeters off the surface from your lens and then adjust the beam size till it's the smallest you can get it. Now in order to adjust the beam size you, you just have to turn the little lens thing there, you know, like a little deal right there and there's a setting in laser gerbil that allows you to uh, focus, you know, the laser and have it on at a small percentage and uh, not ruin your work and get the smallest beam. So you do that first and get it all set up and you get your X and Y, you line it up where you want it and then you make sure you you know, home the machine there so it knows where to start from and then it's going to give you a countdown and you're going to put your glasses on basically and uh, it's going to take care of business so um, once you get that all set up then you're going to get something out of it until you get all those things just right until you get the height of the of the laser machine right you see I've had to add blocks what I'm thinking about doing is just uh, making a bracket on here with some of those adjustable like refrigerator or washing machine legs so I can just you know screw that thing on there and uh, when I want it when I need to turn it up I can just you know raise the level of the machine up that way instead of sticking blocks underneath it kind of ugly that way blocks and shims and all that stuff so but that's the way they're doing it you know if you got to do something where it doesn't have a level surface then you're going to need to you know lift either end of this you know, y-axis roller up so you can get the actual surface of what you're engraving to be level so I, I haven't had to run into that problem yet but you can get these little bags of uh, beveled shims at uh, you know one of the big box stores for a couple bucks and you can just slide those under there and get get it to whatever height you want get a big bag of them and you're done um, yeah or make some brackets <laughs> So anyhow, uh, yeah, and this is a pretty nice little laser engraver. I think it was the cheapest one I could find at the time on uh, Amazon, although I did watch a video the other day, and a guy has gotten one that actually works good for $99. I, I don't, don't ask me which one it is. <laughs> I don't know. Don't ask me for a link to the video. I watch many videos. You could probably search it out, $99 Amazon laser. <laughs> Yep, and this machine here, I think I paid $150 for it with tax and all that stuff. And it, you know, I mean, it's a pretty basic machine. Uh, doesn't, you don't really get too much for that amount of money, but uh, it 
seems to work. And that's all that is important. Right now I've got it on top of my other CNC machine right here just because I space is at a premium at this point down here because I, uh, I have my tools all set up and uh, the other side of the basement is just storage right now. So I really don't have a, a lot of space to set up at this particular point. I'm working on my uh, organizational uh, facilities there. Facilities organization, I should say. Yeah. So anyhow, I uh, hope you liked this video and I uh, just thought I'd give you some tips and hints and if you got one of these Ben Box things and you got one of these offline gerbil things, well, you could basically eliminate that and just run this. I haven't hooked it all up yet because I still am using this using this uh, offline setup for the CNC machine more so. I don't really want to change it yet till I get more familiar with it. And this this unit here seems to work fine for doing what I need to do right now. And I can always take this out of the way and hang it up on the wall or something, and then. Uh, you know, use it whenever I need it for right now. But, uh, I, oh, I do have one more thing. <laughs> wow. I always got something. I did receive this in the mail. And this is a laser tree, 20 watt laser. Yeah, so definitely more. You can see the size difference is kind of a lot bigger. <laughs> so that's probably about a. <laughs> 5 watt maybe or something where this is 20 so this is the way this is going to go right on here on the side of this like that and then this box here will control all the laser functions and this right here will be a <clears throat> an extra burner just for doing uh, jobs that I could run with this roller more easily than setting all that up on here and changing this so you know, yeah, I got this in the mail the other day, yeah, and it comes with the proper cords, and it interfaces with this PW or this uh, PWM port right here. It's three pins, so you, only a certain kinds of those lasers will interface with that three-pin port right there. So if you if you have one of these and you want to try the laser with it, make sure you get one that interfaces with the three-pin, because the boards on most of these is like uh, here's the laser. It's only two. So my other laser that I have, my red laser, let's see. This unit right here, it's a red laser. It's about five watts. I had this mounted on there before. Um, let me get this set up here. Yeah, uh, this is only a two pin connection right here. Let's see if I can focus on it. Yeah, the TTL right there is the one you want. And uh, it's only two pin on this model, so I can't use that. <laughs> At least not for that project, anyways. So um, I didn't pay much for it. I think it was twenty bucks or something, you know. So it's no biggie. Um, but yeah, anyway. So just so you know that you know when you buy one of these lasers, make sure you get the proper type for your machine. Likewise with the stepper motors. <laughs> Make sure you get the one with the right connector. Uh, this one here didn't even say what kind of connector it was. It just had a bunch of different connectors in the bag, which is nice of them, but unfortunately it didn't have the correct one to fit this machine right here, which is an Asian machine. It's, you know, it's all, the stuff is all in Chinese. So, uh, yeah, so be careful of that. You know, the compatibility of these things, there's just so many different of those little connectors right there that you never know what kind you're going to have on what machine and always verify if it's two or three pin or what the connection ratio is because if you don't you're going to end up changing those connectors so you can hook it all up like I do. <laughs> You've got brown and purple and green and all different kinds of wires there. Who knows what they go to. I had to test them all one by one just to make sure they were right. <laughs> So, anyhow, if you're still here, <laughs> you're still interested, good luck to you. I hope that you uh, thrive in your CNC endeavors, in your laser engraving endeavors. And uh, I would certainly appreciate it if you would click subscribe. I could use some subscribers. I'm trying to get to 500 at least and do a giveaway. So, anyhow, yeah, do that. And uh, hit the like button. Give me a thumbs up. How about it? And even if I never see you ever again, you just watch this video one time, you just happened to cross my video, could you please help me out and click subscribe? 
I mean, you didn't pay any money to watch it, so uh, I really don't care either way. I have fun doing it, and uh, I'm going to keep on doing it. So, anyways, this is Mark with Mark's Home Hobbies, and have a great day.